Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bone show. It's an honor to have on the Rock and Review, New York Times bestselling author, actor, and filmmaker, Turk Pipkin. Thanks, Turk, for coming on the show. Yay! The crowd goes crazy. Yay! Yay! We got to talk about this new book that you just did with uh, your friend Willie, Willie Nelson's Letters to America. And uh, what a great read with this okay, book. I'm happy. Thank you. You know, how did, this, how did this whole book come about? Because when I started reading it, um, it, it surprised me. It's not all letters. I mean, some of it, essays and lyrics and everything else. How did you and Willie work on this? Well, we, we worked on it remotely and we had written a book uh, before together. Great. I, which is also a good book. Although everybody tells me this is now their favorite, but uh, <laughs> we wrote a book called the Tao of Willie. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of the philosophy of Willie uh, or the, the Tao of Willie, depending on how you pronounce that, or as Willie calls it, the toe of Willie. And, uh, <laughs> and, I don't know that we thought we were going to write another book, but I had this, I always remember that Willie, you know, would talk about it when he used to write letters when he was on the road. He was a letter writer, you know, now we're not like that much anymore. We, we got our phones. But when the pandemic started and shut down, I, I just was really taken with this idea. And I went back to Willie. We started talking about it. And, and I said, it's the kind of the original idea was Letters to America. At one point, we were talking about calling it Yesterday's Wine because the Yesterday's Wine album of Willie's is, is, was such a, a kind of a game changer. People think back to his albums that came out a couple of years later than that. And um, like Phases and Stages and, and uh, as the story albums. But Yesterday's Wine was a great one. And Willie wanted to use some of those songs. But as we started writing letters to people Willie loved and one thing or another and passing drafts back and forth and notes, we realized, well, we need letters and songs. And then you need stories to introduce the letters because if you write Dear Mama and Papa, you, you need to know who Willie's grandparents were and that they raised him. And we spent uh, much, of, much of the pandemic uh, texting and emailing and phone calling. Um, How amazing. Well, you know, we, some uh, of the only time we saw each other the whole time was that when we finished the book and we had our, our noted manuscripts printed and we met uh, Annie and Willie and Christy and I, Christy's my wife, we met in the parking lot at Target on the west side of Austin and about a 40 mile an hour breeze and we threw the manuscripts from window to window. Things were still pretty shut down pretty tight then. You don't want to be the person that makes Willie Nelson sick, believe me. And um, we literally sat there in the cars and shot the breeze in the parking lot. And that was, a, that's the closest we got together. So. It was a it was a great experience, you know. I, I in the long run, I guess I ended up spending more time talking to Willie during the pandemic than I would have in a normal year. Wow! Well, I'll tell you what. Some of the ones that struck me from reading the book, Turk, were included uh, the letter to uh, Roger Miller, the letter to Gene Autry, and also I think one of the most poignant ones was a letter to Mother Earth. Yeah, well, those are all all favorites of mine, but I. I realize that I guess they're all favorites to Willie and me, or they wouldn't be in there. But uh, Roger, obviously, great Nashville American legend, one of the funniest guys who ever lived. And mm -hmm. Willie and Roger uh, were very close. And, you know, was, get to be Willie's age. I'm 20 years behind Willie. I'm not no spring chicken myself, but you get to be 87, 88 years old now. You know, you've lost a lot of friends you loved. And uh, I think there's there's a fair amount of that in the book. Um, Gene Autry was a you know childhood hero of Willie's. There's a great story in there that Willie tells about Gene coming to the Highwayman's recording session. And all four of them, there, you know, there's Chris and Willie and Johnny and Waylon. And the, all four of them, Gene Autry was their childhood hero. And, um, it, you know, it's, those are amazing stories. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it, it goes on and on. And Mother Earth, I think, goes in with the same thing as uh, to writing a letter to America's family farmers. You know, Willie has he's never been shy about saying what he believes. And he doesn't say it in concert, which I, as I think is one of the reasons everybody should really admire Willie's politics. It's the best kind of politics. We're, you know, we're all Americans. It doesn't matter what your politics are. You should have the right to be able to say what you believe. If you don't like what the other guy says, you know, turn it off. Right. But when you go to Willie's concert, he was made a deal with the audience. I came here to entertain you. You came here to listen to this, my songs. 
the mm-hmm. classics and maybe a couple of new ones. And, and uh, we're going to take it from there. And I, I think that's a, a really an amazing way to, um, to live your life, which is to have that creative bond with your audience and to have that bond we're all born with to the world around us. You know, I can't agree with you more, Turk. And I think that his method obviously has worked for decades, but also, you know, in a great book like this, they did with you, Letters to America, he gets to bring out his views. And I thought one of the other things that struck me, you know, being based here in Nashville was how Willie was very honest with you in this book and with readers about being in Nashville. And a lot of us know the story and that, you know, he was, you know, kind of shunned here and then went down to Texas and ended up, you know, becoming a part of the outlaw movement that that brought him to where he is today. And I think that it, it shows that he wasn't, you know, stopped in his tracks as so many creative people can be uh, when they hit a brick wall. Instead, he hit the brick wall and said, OK, I'm going to Texas. I'm going to find my audience. And, you know, and I think a lot of guys would have been happy with the success that Willie had achieved in Nashville. I mean, you know, a lot of people, if your whole career was you wrote crazy, a lot of people would have said, I made, there's my career. But right. Willie wrote a lot of songs and had a lot of songs recorded and had a close relationship with a lot of people in Nashville, with a lot of singers and songwriters. And But he also knew that he was better than the Willie Nelson records that were produced in his Nashville years, that he didn't really need all those back, backup singers and that were added after he'd recorded. And he didn't really need to wear a turtleneck. <laughs> and he just needed to be Willie Nelson. In Texas, he could always sell tickets and he could support his very big family and uh, he could be Willie Nelson. And boy, to everyone's, you know, obviously for Austin and for Texas, what a huge thing it was for us that Willie came home. But, you know, it worked out for everybody. Definitely. Well, speaking of which, I got to brag on you some, Turk, to where uh, knowing your your acting work, especially from The Sopranos, I'm you know, sorry, and, and seeing your face now. and knowing you right off the bat, it's like you still have to have people that stop you from The Sopranos, from your acting time, but also uh, commendable for the documentaries that you've created as well, which is no easy feat either. I, I still have a lot of Sopranos fans coming up to me and it's not like maybe in the old days when I couldn't buy a drink in New York for years that was that was fun but uh the um it wasn't because I'd been kicked out of those bars it was because people wanted to buy me a drink no I still have a lot of people come up to me and say you know have you heard the good news and I you know I have to turn around and say you know he has risen or I have to fall asleep because I play that narcoleptic uh born again uh Janice's boyfriend Aaron but the it's interesting a kind of a combination of the Sopranos and Willie in, enable us to do a lot of the work we do with our nonprofit, the Novelty Project. And so there's a nice connection there. I had wanted for a long time to make a film with Nobel laureates that looked at the world, films called Nobelity, that worked at the problems of the world and try to take the politics out of it. You can't completely, but if I found the smartest people on earth, scientists and Nobel Peace laureates as well, and ask them about the problems we face, maybe their insights would be something everybody could agree upon. So when I was making The Sopranos, I was constantly going to the crew and saying, I'm going to shoot this movie all over the world, but I'm not going to have much crew. How do I do it? And they were all saying, good luck. But they were very helpful. And also Willie and and Governor Ann Richards were both early supporters of ours in, in Texas. And then when we made Nobility, there's two more feature documentaries, uh, One Piece at a Time and Building piece at a time a fantastic interview i shot with him at willie's western town like texas we play chess while i ask willie how he makes the decisions he makes in his life the kind of things we were talking about you know how, how do you live your life how do you you know why do you use you know sustainable biodiesel in your bus why do you what's the deal with farm aid well, you know he makes all these conscious decisions and it's a really great interview and he beats me at chess while he's saying all these wise things but um we funded, we've built about 50 schools, all are part of about 50 schools in Kenya. And we also work in the U.S. in American schools. All the problems in education are obviously not abroad. But uh, we've built about 50 chunks of 50 schools in, in rural Kenya. And when we were doing the first one, we needed to raise a bunch of money. And we said, how about dinner with Willie? We'll sell tickets for a lot of money. And we can imagine <laughs> at this point what people would pay for dinner with Willie. So we had a group with Willie said, I'll come for an hour. You know, I don't really like to hang out with strangers all that much, but I'll do it. I like what you're doing. 
And then Willie stayed all night long. We had an incredible evening. And a year later, we wanted to do it again. We're like, who could replace Willie? And we realized, oh, we have to get every other actor and and filmmaker and writer and musician in Texas and come to one giant dinner. And so that's kind of what we've been doing over the years. We've really fallen upon the the, the largesse and generosity of Texas musicians. So the Flatlanders, uh, who have a hit album out right now, Joe Ely, Jimmy Gilmore, and Butch Hancock, they've been big supporters, and Chris Christopherson, and we've, we, we've had it really, it's been a long run and pretty good. Well, and I think that's what's so incredible too, Turk, that not only did you have this brilliant idea with the documentary and eventually the two other documentaries, but then you put it into action and what you've achieved, you know, with, with the libraries, with the schools and all these things you've done, you, you've made an impact, you know, with this concept about uh, interviewing, you know, the Nobel Prize winners and, and well, really putting it into action. All the Nobel laureates and Willie, Basically, the, of all the things I learned about these problems we face, they all still came back to the same conclusion, which is it doesn't really matter what you learn or what you say to really about what you do. Mm. And in Willie's interview, he says, um, you know, we know what's right or wrong. We all know what's right or wrong. You know, the question is, what do we choose to do? And, mm. and he says, he goes on to say, you have to feed the peace. And uh, that may be through education or it may be through reaching out to other people, but you know, we are very, we live in a more and more contentious world, both in our country and out of our country. But, you know, hey, I got a lot of friends on both sides of this political divide and we don't sit around at, at night and argue about politics. We're friends. And by when we talk things over, we find ways to go, oh, yeah, I do see a little bit of what you're talking about. So maybe America can follow some of Willie's example and uh, feed the peace. Well, you know, speaking of which, I got to bring this up, Turk, with your uh, body of work now coming out of the pandemic. Um, are you working on another book or another documentary, possibly? I, I'm working on, we make a lot of short films still, the Nobility Project. We're at nobility.org, like Nobel and O-B-E-L. Um, and I'm, I just got back from Kenya, opening some new schools. So I'm always shooting conservation and education work, but we're, rather than making features, Attention spans have gotten shorter, so <laughs> the videos videos are the way to go. And um, the um, we a lot more people see the work and get inspired by the work, and a lot of them just get inspired not to support it to go find something that, like that that they believe in, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm writing another novel. I'm always writing. I've got a couple of uh, earlier novels that I've written that are have been optioned for screenplays in Hollywood. You know, hurry up and go slow. We'll see. Um, we, I did have one made with, I've actually made quite a few movies with Willie, but Willie was the star of, a co-star of a movie called Angel Sing, a really great Christmas movie that was based on a novel I wrote called When Angels Sing. And you can find it on Amazon. You can look online. You can find it. it you know, it's Christmas in July. It's a great time to watch, but Willie plays. And, and I think Harry Connick Jr. is in that one Harry too, Harry Connick right? Jr. and Connie Britton and Chris Christopherson and Ray Benson from Asleep at the Wheel and Bruce Robeson. And a whole lot of uh, who's who of Texas music and country music. And Willie plays a guy named Nick who may or may not be Saint Nick. And you know, if, you're, if you're making a movie and you're going to cast a guy who might be Santa, you know, who's a better Saint Nick than Willie Nelson? Nobody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I knew when I wrote this novel, actually, and when we were getting ready to make this, this movie, when I knew that Willie had always played Santa for his family. He loves putting on the suit and, after a while, he didn't have to put on the white beard anymore. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. I can't wait to see what new projects you come out with and everything, Turk. And once again, the new book is out now, already a best times, uh, New York Times bestseller, um, Willie Nelson's Letters to America. And, and you co wrote right there's your name right there, Turk. See right right there, there on the cover. And I'm going to say, as much as I love the book, and I do love the book, the, the reviews and the feedback from people have just been amazing. But um, also, Willie's like, they're behind me, a couple of my favorite Willie albums. The, you know, the new Sinatra tribute album, My Way is Incredible. Oh, um, nice. This album over here is just uh, amazing. That's life. Uh, and the new Buddy Cannon album that he did with Buddy at, out of Nashville is amazing. Willie sounds really good. And yes, we know that every once in a while somebody's saying, oh, no, Willie's, I read Willie died, you know. And which is agony for Willie's family to keep having his rumors keep coming up. But, you know, Willie, in his usual way, he wrote, I woke up still not dead again today. And he, 
whenever somebody says, I read Willie died, he just sings that song. And um, I guess tell everybody, Willie's going on this Friday. He starts his first show of his tour in Austin at Luck. I'll be there. And then he has his Outlaw music tour coming up. Farm Aid is coming up. Get on WillieNelson.com. You know, get the book, but get on there. Find out where Willie's playing and go see Willie. You know, th- he may do 10 more years of tours, but if he does, go see all 10 years of them. I'll tell you what, every time I've seen Willie in concert, I have left in awe. But I think also what, what I enjoy so much about the book that you and Willie did together, Turk, is the humor that comes through it and the honesty and just like with Willie's music, when he performs and with his records and everything else, his, his honesty and his passion permeates it. And I'm so glad you got to work with him on this book. Yeah, well, me too. And as Willie says, you know, and talk about letter writing, he says, uh, letter writing ain't what it used to be and grammar ain't either. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Turk Pipkin, thank you so much for joining the Rock and Review. We can't wait to see more of your shorts, your next novel and all the other great projects and maybe even at a Willie Nelson concert. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show. 